Hi, welcome to worship today. We are glad that you're with us. Last week, we started a new series called God of the Impossible. It is one of my favorite things to talk about is how God starts with impossible and he can do amazing things. We are glad that you are with us this week. Now settle in and let's go into the presence of God. Good morning, everybody. Would you stand? We are so glad that you are here with us today. Welcome to those of you watching online. We are excited to worship God together in this place. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures the faith. Never enough, and you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's no Turn graves into 
into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the Yes, give him a hand clap of praise. Nothing better than him. We are so, so blessed to know him and to know that he is our God and he goes before us. There's nothing that's impossible for him. Amen? Amen. Welcome to worship. Welcome to those of you online once again. We are so happy to be able to gather with you here in this room, to be able to um, connect with you online. It is a good, good way to start our week. If you guys want to take a seat for a moment, Pastor Dennis is going to come up with just a few announcements. Good morning. It is good to see those of you that are here, and we are thrilled that you are uh, viewing and coming online with us today as well as in the service. A couple of announcements. We do have several things that are happening. Um, we've just started this new um, preaching series on God of the Impossible, and it's uh, how can you not get excited about seeing God at his impossible best? Um, there are lots of things happening. We have continued um, Bible studies happening, Zoom, and a few online. You can go on, onto our app or our webpage, and you can get that information and sign up for those. If you've not been a part, some of them have started, some haven't, you're welcome to join in. Even if you can only make it uh, to come and go on those, you're welcome to be a part of it. We do have one Lenten study that the three pastors are working on. I'll be doing this week on the miracles of Jesus. It's entitled The Grave Robber. It's a neat study. It's 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. You can get that link from Pastor Brandy and uh, join in with us on that. Um, just a couple of things that are happening. Um, every year, we do a big thing called Winter Feast that raises money for our kids to go to camp. Last year, camp was shut down, and so that didn't happen, and everything was thrown in a mess. Well, camps are planning to reopen this year. They put in a lot of safety uh, guards, and they've changed a lot of things. And we have uh, a plan to take our kids to camp this summer, but we're also needing to raise the funds because with camp not happening last year, camp fees went up as well, which is expected. Um, and so as that happens, Winter Feast is scheduled for the 27th of March on that Saturday. Uh, typically, there's a meal in here and a live, uh, the, the auction that's going on, the silent auction that's taking place. This year, because of some of the changes, you'll still order your tickets. They're $10.00. You can do that online uh, with a Sign Up Genius, or you can um, get a hold of Pastor Brandy and, and get your tickets. But uh, tickets are $10. Your meal will be delivered to you outside the gates or outside the cafe. Um, it'll be a drive through takeout meal. Um, we're also, Brandy is trying to put together an online silent auction, which really makes it silent. That's a double silent kind of an auction, I guess. Um, which takes some of the fun out of watching who's signing up for something then going and deliberately putting your name on that list, but that's a whole different thing. Um, but if you would like to be a part of that, if you have something you'd like to donate to help the youth out, you can do that by contacting Pastor uh, Brandy. Um, the one other announcement that I wanted to make, and this is exciting, um, the missions team has been looking at, as we have been resurrecting our Purple Door Community Ministries as things are starting back up. Our community meal is reaching 250 to 350 people a month in our meals. Um, that has, during this pandemic these last months, has grown. Our free store is reaching uh, 15 to 20 to 30 people a week. 
and we've had to change the way we do it, but it's, it's reaching out. The need has grown greater and greater, and our missions team has been looking at what are some of the emerging kinds of needs as we continue to reach our purple arms throughout this community, how can we make that happen? And one of the needs that we've seen is that um, we're, we're starting a new service um, to reach out to the homeless in the area. We've, Grove City has had a homeless, uh, uh, had a homeless population. We don't see that. Uh, it's been here all along. It's not something new, it's been there. But this last year has seen that grow even more as more and more people uh, come into need. And so we're starting a new ministry here in March. It's entitled Meals of Hope. And the idea is that once a month on the third Saturday of each month, which the, we're going to start on March 20th, we're going to be making meals here in the church, boxing hot meals, loading them into the bus, taking them down to the travel lodge, um, down by uh, 71, and we're going to be distributing uh, meals to the homeless. We don't know to what extent that's going to be, but we're lifting it up into God's hands, and we want to be able to make as uh, much of an impact in a population that really is um, silent in the area. And so if you want to be a part of that, we would love to have people join in with us. This is a new ministry. We're going to be putting together teams. We need a setup team um, that will meet at noon on Saturdays. And we're, we're trying to keep the meal prep as simple as we can, but be, still be able to provide a hot meal. That will happen at noon on Saturdays. We're going to need some people to, to get the meals ready, get them boxed. We're going to have another go team that will leave this place somewhere around 1.40, load into the bus, take the meals down with a group where we can just be able to distribute um, some meals of hope to a population that needs to know that we're praying for them and that we're there for them. If this is something that's exciting for you, get a hold of Pastor Lizzie for more information or to be able to say, hey, I want to be a part of that. Uh, we're going to need people to start out. Uh, pray for us. If you feel like this is something you really want to see and you want to make a donation, you can do that too. But we want to be able to see the Purple Door Community Ministries reach out more and more into the needs of this community in ways both seen and unseen as we promote Jesus Christ throughout it all. And so those are some of the exciting things that are happening. We are continuing to be the church of Jesus Christ, whether we're online, whether we're in-house, we are still the Purple Door Church, and we will continue to do that every step of the way. Let's continue to worship. We are worshiping an impossible God in a world that's even more impossible because of what God can do through us. Let's come and worship. Just stand as we continue to worship this morning. darkness falls, it won't prevail, cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph, my God will never fail, my God will never fail, I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you,
Take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Cause you take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn. take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. He is the only one who can do that. God is the only one who can do that. As I was um, doing my devotions this week, um, one of my daughters for my birthday got me this really awesome, this really awesome journal. I was going to bring it today, but I didn't to show you. Um, but it's paper back and I didn't want it to get all wet in the rain. Uh, but it's really cool. It's like guided. It's got Bible verses in it, and places where you can write down thoughts and reflect, and places to be grateful and write down prayer requests and all sorts of things. Um, but as I was reading this week, I came across this verse that's um, from 1 Corinthians, and it's um, 1 Corinthians 14, 15. It says, So what shall I do? 
I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. You can't pray with understanding. You can't sing with understanding unless you have understanding. And how do we get that? We get that by diving into God and who he is. And I think that Pastor Dennis and Brandy have done just an excellent job in these series showing us the character of God. It's not just the things that he does for us, but they're showing us who he is. And you guys have no idea how prayed for you are throughout the week. We pray for you on Thursday nights. I'm constantly praying over all of you. And like I said last week, I know many of the situations that you guys are facing. So for those situations, I pray specifically for the situations I don't. God knows. He knows it all. But one of my prayers for you in this place and connecting with us online is revival. Revival in this place to know who God is, not just what he does, not just to know him for what he does, but to know who he is so that we can come into this place. We pray every, every week that as you come through these doors, you will know that you have come into a place that is safe, a place that is a refuge, a place where God dwells, a place where we can come together and we can worship him and we won't be afraid of the silence to let him move and do the things that he wants to do in our hearts as we are here before him. To come expecting, to fight the spiritual battles here as well as out there. Because there's power when we are together. There's power when we are together and we are praying for one another and we are lifting each other up and we come together as a family in the name of Jesus. I don't know where you are today. I don't know if today is a day where you feel like you need a breakthrough, but God is here and he is ready to give that to you. And he is waiting for you to just lay it all before him and say, God, I can't do anymore. I've done everything I could do. When I, my dad used to tell me all the time, when you've done everything you can do, stand firm. It's biblical. God has got your breakthrough. He's the God of the impossible. So let's continue to worship him and praise him for that this morning.
Grateful to be in your presence. Grateful to know that you meet us where we are. Grateful to know that you are truly a God of the impossible, that there's nothing you can't do. God, we've come here this morning just wanting to be in your presence. We ask that you will come and that you will be with us. And that, God, when we leave this place today, that you will continue to go with us. And we know that we, you will because you are our faithful God. God, there are people in this room this morning who do need a breakthrough. Physical healing. Healing in relationships. Spiritual battles that are being fought right now. So we break every stronghold in the name of Jesus. And we pray that your hope and your peace will rain down upon us, God that you will break whatever bondage is in this room, in our lives, that you will be king and God over all. Things that may seem impossible to us, God, when through our eyes are not impossible for you. You are a God of miracles and you are a God of the breakthrough. So we offer all before you this morning, asking you to do with it as you will, God. And we promise you that we will be walking, living, breathing testimonies as to what you have done in our lives. That you've picked up our pieces and you've put us back together. You've made us whole. You've given us new life. You've given us understanding. We can sing with our hands lifted high, saying that you are the God who heals. We love you, God. Thank you so much for loving us, and thank you for being with us this morning. In your name, amen. You may be seated.
We are beginning now into our second week with this new series, The God of the Impossible. Glad you're joining us online. Know that we miss you. I know you can see me. I wish we could see you, but then you'd probably have to take your jammies off and put clothes on, and that would, at least I would hope you would, but we are glad that you are joining us online. We are starting as we go through this Lenten season to open up deeper and deeper how God is the God of the impossible and what it means to us. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Almighty and gracious God, as we come into this space, we once again come seeking your will. Open up to us, Lord, your word. May it fill our hearts, may it fill our minds, may it fill our souls, that we may know that we are here, that you are calling us to touch us, to make us whole in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Today's lesson comes to us from Ezekiel 37. I'm reading verses 1 through 10. It's a part of a bigger story, and I'll refer to some parts of it, but, but the story you've heard, you've maybe even sung. The hand of the Lord was upon me. This is speaking to Ezekiel. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. And then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And this is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life, and then you will know that I am the Lord. And so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. And so I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. The word of God given to his people. That's one of those picturesque stories that we can visualize. We've sung, hear the word of the Lord as the bones came together. But it's as if we know what it means to be in the desert. We've spent the last year or two in the desert, it seems like, and all of us, I, I had wanted to do a show of hands to see who could say that they were a part of being in the desert, but the reality is all of us have been. There are those dry times in our life when it's as if we look out and all we see is dust and, and we see lifeless, lifelessness. We don't have answers. We aren't living the lives that we thought we were or want to. It's, it's almost as if we, we want to be in this dream sequence that we're going to wake up and we're going to go, whoa, I'm glad that was only a dream. But guess what? It's not Wizard of Oz. We're living the desert, and all of us have gone through those times when we felt lost, we felt broken. We've been separated from from ourselves and our families and our workplaces. We've been separated from our schools. We've been separated from everything that we've seen has, has been, is being done differently. It's as if we're living in that desert. 
And so we can sympathize with what Ezekiel was seeing in this part. Looking for hope. Looking for something to give us renewal. Ezekiel 37 is a bigger picture. It, yes, it's a dream of Ezekiel's and God's trying to get across this message to Ezekiel, but it's a bigger one. It's as he's looking at these armies of people that have been slain and scattered, it's a bigger story about God's people, his people of Judah and Israel. God's kingdom controlled that whole area. They were prosperous. They were proud. There was the north and the south. And they controlled it all. They were the ones in power. And yet here they were slain, their bodies and their bones thrown about from all of the killing. And armies were scattered into other countries. And all that they could see was the dust gathering on the people, the armies, and the bones. There was no life. There was no hope. There was no renewal. This was God's people. And so the question remains, where was God in this? They had to ask that. Did God abandon us? Were we so bad that God left us? Is this what God's prophecy is all about? And that's what Ezekiel sees in this dream, this place of dryness, of despair, of hopelessness. It's a picture of the spiritual condition that was being shown to the people, that the people were living in. It was dry. It was desolate. And that's how many of us, all of us, have felt at some point in our lives, and probably more than that in this past year. And many of you sitting here today and listening today are going through that now, asking that same question, why am I so dry inside? Why do I feel so removed from God? Has God left us? When will dry bones come alive again? When can we experience God breathing his spirit into us again? We need a revival. And that's what God was saying to Ezekiel. You know what, Ezekiel, you need a revival. You need to feel something moving again in your soul to let you know that I am still there. We get lost and we wonder at those times is God even going to step into this? Have we lost contact? Can we not hear God anymore? Do we not see God anymore? And we have to struggle to find God. Why has God abandoned us? Why has God given up on our lives? Have we strayed so far? But is it God? Ezekiel had this vision. God gave him this vision, and, and he, he saw before him this land that was nothing but bones, nothing but dust, nothing but desolation and death. And God asked Ezekiel a question. Ezekiel, do you think these bones can rise again? Now. Now. Ezekiel probably thought this was a trick question. How do you answer God? I, do I think these dead bones can rise again? No. That's probably not what God's looking for. And so he gave him the politically correct answer, and he said, well, I don't really think so, but I know if you plan on doing it, God, you can. You see, the first thing he was trying to get across to Ezekiel is, you need to be prepared to ask that question, and at least to answer it. And so then he says to Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy to those bones. I want you to preach to those bones. Yeah, right. You want me to preach to a desert of bones? What am I supposed to say to them? 
And God said, I want you to prophesy to them. I want you to preach to them. And I want you to tell them that I have not abandoned them. And that I am still there for them. And I will always be there for them. And that one day, all of these will come back together. And God, this world, will experience my favor found in my people. Wow. And so he preaches. He starts preaching to these bones. Now, my guess is it was probably pretty timid. Like, hey, bones, I got some good news for you today. But then all of a sudden, they started coming together. And those bones started to form up into skeletons and then tendons and ligaments and then skin formed them. And as that's happening, Ezekiel's on fire now. He's preaching. He's saying, look what I'm doing. This is the best sermon I've ever preached. And as he's doing that, these, this army, this vast army is standing. And God has breathed life into them and given them hope. You see, the people were scattered, but it was more than just in in themselves there was this animosity between the north and the south between judah and israel and and so they were even scattered amongst themselves they were fighting amongst themselves all you have to do is turn on the news and there's some uh, there's some uh, similarities there where we don't even know how to get along with ourselves let alone fight an enemy And in fact, if you skip a couple of verses up to 15 in that 37th chapter, God gives Ezekiel some further instructions and says, I want you to pick up two sticks and I want one of them you to put Judah, my my tribe of Judah, and then the other one, um, Ephraim, the, the, the states to the north of Israel, and I want you to write those names on it, and then I want you to take those two sticks and put them together in your hand and I want you to hold tight. And I want that to be your preaching to the people, that I'm going to bring my people back together. And we're going to unite all of my people as one. And I'm going to breathe life back into all of you. To be in a place in the desert and to hear God's presence, to give hope. You know, we've been singing about that in our songs today. You know, if you listen to the words, you turn graves into gardens. You turn dry bones into an army. The battle belongs to you, and I'm going to see a victory. Those are the words we've been singing. It's up to God. We need to hear that voice today. As I was talking with Sue last night, as I was trying to put the sermon together, she said, you know, the song that comes to mind is, is one of Lauren Daigle. It was an older song of hers. It's called Come Alive. And, and I listened to it, and the words, the chorus says this. As we call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Breathe, O breath of God, breathe on us. Breathe in us. We need that kind of knowledge of knowing that God wasn't speaking to just Israel. He wasn't just speaking to the Israelites, but he was speaking to us as well. Our lives are shaped by our our expectations. You will live up or down by your expectations on life. If you go through life saying, I can't do that, it's not possible, I'll never be able to do that, then you'll never be able to make it happen. We will live down to those expectations. But if our expectation is, I can do that, and with God's help, I can do anything, when I place myself in God's hands, then we can live up to the expectation of what God is given to us. 
if you believe that God is with you, ready to pick you up from the ashes and the dust, and that he is there to give you new life, then there is hope. You see, the first thing that, that God expected of Ezekiel was not the prayer, not the preaching, but it was for Ezekiel to say, yes, Lord, I believe that you can do this. His first question was, do you believe that I can make this happen? And you know Ezekiel's thinking to himself, no, there's no chance. And yet his response was, if you can do this, Lord, then yes, I believe you can make it happen. That's the first step that Ezekiel had to go through. He had to say, yes, Lord, I know. We have to be able to live up to the expectations in our own lives to be able to say, yes, I know that God can make a difference in my life. I know that God is the God of the impossible. And no matter how far into the desert we may be, how, no matter how torn apart our lives may be, God is always there for us. We need to live up to the expectation of knowing that nothing is impossible to God. Nothing can be greater than God's purpose in this world. There is nothing in this world that can take God away. He is the God of the impossible. In verse 8 of that, that scripture that we read, said there was no breath in them. After they formed together, they just laid there. They were formed as people, but there was no breath in them. And then God said, Ezekiel, I want you to preach again. Only this time I want you to pray that I have the, the authority to bring breath and life into them. And so he does, and God breathes into them. That, that Hebrew word is, is that word ruach, that means the, the spirit, um, the breath, the wind. Anytime you see that in the Old Testament, Jesus or God breathed life into Adam and Eve. It was his breath that gave them life. When, when the Old Testament talks about the winds blowing, it's God's spirit blowing amongst the lands. And here God's saying, pray that I can breathe life into this vast army. And so Ezekiel preaches, and God reaches out and gives them life. But even more than that, he said to Ezekiel, let me fill you with my spirit. Let me so fill you with revival, with my spirit, that you can take this message to my people and give them hope. I have not abandoned them. I have not given up on them. But I am ready to bring them new life. And then in verse 10, God was saying that the breath of God came and the dry bones came alive and a great army was restored. Dry bones can live again. You see, the first thing that Ezekiel had to do for himself was admit that God could do it. And then to be able to open up for God's breath to so fill him and revive him that he was a new person. He was on fire. The first thing we have to do is be able to admit that we may not be able to get us through this desert. We may not have the answers to be able to get through the problems that are going on in our lives. We may not be able to pull it together at all. We may not think we even deserve it or have the power to it. We've been carrying these burdens for our whole lives in, in some respect. And so the first thing we need to be able to do is to say, God, I can't handle this on my own, but I know that you can, no matter what that may be. No matter what we carry in our lives, no matter what the world may throw at us in our lives, we need to be able to turn that over to God to say, we can't deal with it. We don't have the tools. We're not able. We're not good enough. We're not strong enough. But God, I know you can, and I know you can raise me up. That's the first step. And the second step is to be willing and able to receive the breath of God in our lives. Breathe on me, breath of God, 
and fill me to overflowing, restore me to life. Does it change anything in the world? No. What it changes is it gives us hope. It gives us renewal. It gives us something to go on. Are you ready to call upon God's spirit to fill you? Are you ready for God to create a revival in you, to draw you together that God is saying to you, I want to bring all of my people together, never to let you go. In fact, this time we're going to be stronger, we're going to be better. To allow his peace, his purpose, his hope, his renewal fill us. The God of the impossible can make dry bones live again and can fill our bones to life everlasting. First thing we need to do is say, yes, God. Amen. Let us pray. God, as we gather in this time, in this time of prayer, in this time of offering your word to us, there are many of us here that are, that are in that desert that we've been living in and out of it, and we try our best to get out of it, but it keeps pulling us back. Lord, I just ask that you, you just lift up each of us. May your preaching, may your prophesying fill us. May your word speak to us that we can come to you and say, yes, Lord, each of us. We know you have the authority. We know you have the power. You can fix all of this. You can bring me to life again. Restore my ability to see, to hear, to praise you. Lord, pick all of us up and allow us to feel what it means to have that revival happen within us. May your spirit so fill us. May your breath fill us. May those bones rise up again. Let it rise. Let it rise. Amen. We're so glad that you were able to join us today. Thank you for making us part of your weekend. I just want to remind you that we have several Bible studies that are in progress right now, but it's not too late for you to jump in. If you would like to get connected with a Bible study or with a small group, please contact Pastor Brandy and she would be happy to make that connection with you. We're also very excited about our new ministry, Meals of Hope, that Pastor Dennis and Pastor Brandy talked about today. If that's a ministry that you would like to be a part of, please contact Pastor Lizzie and she can get all of the information to you. One last thing, I want to remind you that you can give on our, on our app. If you go down here to the purple heart button, you can set up a one-time gift or a recurring gift. It's because of your giving that we've been able to start new ministries like Meals of Hope, and we are so excited to be able to impact our community in this new way. We are praying for you, and we love you, and we are so grateful to be a part of your weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great week.